Well, hi Colts, I'm happy Monday. Uh, today is Monday, May 4th, also known as May the 4th to be with you day. And today at work, I wore my uh, Mickey Mouse or my, my Disneyland ears that are in the style of um, Star Wars. So you'll see that on the, the, if you look at it from the back, I've got the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda and a beautiful green bow. And I wore these proudly all day today. I tried to find a Star Wars themed book to read, but I was unsuccessful. So I found this other awesome book called Is a Camel a Mammal? all about mammals. It was written by Tish Rabe and illustrated by Jim Dirk. And um, this book is in the style of Cat in the Hat, so I think you're going to enjoy it. Okay, uh, Mike, are you ready? You're going to hold that side. Okay, my husband is helping. Do you want to be on camera? No. Okay, cool. He's got on a Star Wars shirt. Can I show them your Star Wars shirt? No. Never mind. Okay, Mike <laughs> is wearing a Star Wars shirt too. Here we go. Is a camel a mammal? I'm the cat in the hat and I'm writing a book. It's all about mammals. Come on, take a look. From the fruit-eating bat to the smart chimpanzee, from the moles in their holes to the seals in the sea, from raccoons to baboons, I will show them to you. Your mother will not mind at all if I do. And as a mother, I would agree. All mammals breathe air and are warm to the touch. Mammals grow hair, some a lot, some not much. Their hair can be soft like the fur on a kitten or the wool from a lamb you, lamb you knit into a mitten. Their hair can be hard like the small hedgehog spines or the dangerous quills of these two porcupines. Mammals live on cold mountains and hot burning sands, down deep in the ocean or out on dry land. They can hop, jump, and swim or glide high on the breeze. They can walk, run, and climb, or swing up in the trees. They are full of surprises. Of that, I've no doubt. Is a camel a mammal? Read on and find out. What's your prediction? Do you think a camel is a mammal? Mike, what do you predict? Yep. You think so? Yep. Mm, let's find out. What's the world's smallest mammal? I've brought one for you. It weighs less than a dime. Isn't this cute? It's a pygmy shrew. And it looks like it's the size of a dime. I think that's probably a dime. Oh, yeah, because it says dime. Good grief. What's the world, lo world's largest mammal? I knew you would ask. You can figure it out if you're up to the task. Find some elephants, each weighing 12,000 pounds. Weighing elephants is just as hard as it sounds. When you've got 27 stacked up on a scale, you'll come close to the weight, the weight of a single blue whale. This stupendous mammal lives under the sea, and its baby, when born, weighs two tons more than me. Here's a fact about whales that I learned from the speeches. When one jumps out of the water, we say that it breaches. Pretty cool. Daisy, that's my dog right there. It's her tuchus. She's a mammal. She's a mammal. Daisy's a mammal. And speaking of babies, a hippopotamus baby, a son or a daughter. <laughs> Sorry, my husband makes me laugh. A son or a daughter must swim right away because it's born underwater. And these bobcat kittens have soft, furry paws, but hidden inside them are very sharp claws. Baby bats are called batlings, and bat moms, I hear, give birth to just one little batling a year. When a mom armadillo has babies, you'll find she has four. They're all boys or all girls, just one of a kind. I didn't know that, did you? No. That's a fun fact. Each baby possum's the size of a bee. 18 can fit onto a teaspoon, you see. I didn't know that either. Kangaroos, bandicoots, and wallabies have pouches to carry their babies with ease. Marsupial. Those are unusual. Yes, they're called marsupials. Good job, Mr. Haladin. Stealing my thunder. <laughs> Mammals come in all colors, and this helps protect them. They're designed so their enemies cannot detect them. This snowshoe hair will turn white when it snows from the tip of its ears to its pink little nose. But in spring, when the snow melts, its fur turns brown. It can hide then because it blends in with the ground. So you guys, I, I hope that you got this. This is the same animal, but depending on the time of the year, its coloring changes so that it can camouflage into its environment. What an interesting adaptation. If you're in third, fourth, or fifth grade, you should know that word. Skunks have black and white fur that warns, stop, stay away. But if someone keeps trying to get them to play, they will stamp and then let loose with a foul-smelling spray. Skunks tend to lose lots of fun playmates that way. I 
I could say something terrible about my husband right now. <gasps> I'm going <laughs> to resist. Go on. <laughs> oh, look. Daisy. This is my puppy. She's very old. Hey, Daisy. Oh! Ooh, I didn't do anything to her, I promise. <laughs> Daisy do. She smells like a skunk. She does smell like a skunk. The polar bear, walrus, sea lion, and otter spend most of their time in their home in the water. A mother bear snuggles right down in her cave with her two little bear cubs who are both named Dave. They sleep through each winter. It's spring when they wake. It's called hibernation, the sleep that they take. Did you know that frogs hibernate too? Sometimes they freeze. They do. Do you know what it's called when a frog goes into hibernation? Uh-huh. They're it starts with popsicle a amphibians. Ooh, that is very clever and funny, but inaccurate. <laughs> Do you know what it's called? It starts with a T. Transmutation. No, it's called torpor. When frogs hibernate. A giraffe, cow, or bison has horns on its head. Caribou, moose, and reindeer have antlers instead. Horns stay on forever, but antlers, I hear, fall off just like thidwicks the same time each year. That's kind of interesting, huh? Do you think it's like the weather, like the change in temperature that causes them to lose their antlers? No, I think they just forget where they put them. But I'm um, bummed. Do they? What time of year do they lose their antlers? Five o'clock. What time of the year? On Saturday. That would be something to research. If you find out what time of year um, they lose their antlers, I would be curious to know. Part of me thinks that it would be <clears throat> like in the springtime because there's more nutrition and like things are more plentiful. But in the springtime, they're probably, like, using their antlers to try to, like, find mates. So I don't know what the purpose is, if it's more of a mate-finding thing or more of a, like, nutrient storage facility. I don't know. I don't know either. We'll have to check that out. Okay. Some mammals eat birds, reptiles, insects, and fish, and some prefer plants as their favorite dish. Pandas eat mostly a grass called bamboo. Koalas have only one leaf they will chew. Tigers and wolves can go days without food, but it tends to put them in an unfriendly mood. Lion, tiger, jaguar, cheetah, the biggest cats you'll ever meet. A. Hmm. Ant eaters can find time to play. Oh, ant eaters never can find time to play. They have to eat thousands of ants every day. You may think that cheese is what mice like to eat, but they really like seeds such as corn, oats, and wheat. Carnivores love juicy meat. Herbivores like plants to eat. Omnivores, we do recall, like meats and plants. They eat it all. Are you, Mike, an carnivore, an herbivore, or an omnivore? I'm an omnivore. Yeah, I'm an omnivore too, but my sister is an herbivore. A veggie saurus. Mm -hmm. She is a veggie saurus. Now, here is the question I want you to ask. Is a camel a mammal? You're right. It is true. They're the ships of the desert. They're called that, I know, because camels take people where they want to go, across hot desert sands or through cold, icy snow. With its four padded feet, it can walk without sinking and go on for days, even weeks, without drinking. Long, heavy eyelashes, nostrils that close, keep the sand out of its eyes and nose. Are the camels that spit? Yeah. Yep. My book about mammals is almost complete. There are just two more mammals I want you to meet. They are right in this room. One has brown eyes, one blue. These mammals are two of my favorite. They are you. Yes, people are mammals, amazing but true. And oh, and oh, and cats and tall hats. Well, yes, there were mammals too. The end. Okay, so there's a little glossary here. <clears throat> Let's take a look. So to breach means to leap from the water. Do you remember what animal breached? The whale. The blue whale. I don't think blue whales breach. I don't know Humpbacks that it... breach. Oh, you don't think blue whales breach? I don't think they're too big to breach, I think. I don't know if they can like leap all the way out of the water, but they like come up out of the water. Like they like put their noses up in the water. That's not a breach though. We'd have to check into the more specific definition of breach. A carnivore is an animal that likes to eat mostly meat. Ben, can you think of an animal that's a carnivore? You? You're a carnivore? Humans? Okay. You had beans for dinner. What about an herbivore, an animal that eats mostly plants? Mm, that would be like a koala bear. 
What about hibernation? A deep state of sleep during the winter. A mammal is a warm-blooded animal that has a backbone and usually fur or hair and whose babies are fed with milk from their mother's breast. An omnivore is an animal that eats both meat and plants. Ben, can you think of an omnivore? Like yeah, can, like you are more likely to be considered an omnivore than a carnivore. Like a tiger would be a carnivore because they eat primarily meat. They eat only meat. They oh. eat only meat, so they're a carnivore. They're a true carnivore. True carnivore. What happens if, if a tiger eats uh, like a vegetable product? Is it they just won't. not processed? They, they just they'll spit it out or whatever? I don't know. <laughs> a pygmy is a tiny person, animal, or thing. Can you think of a creature that's a pygmy? Yeah, pygmy hippopotamuses. That's true. They talked in this book about pygmy shrews. They have um, pygmy goats. Pygmy fish. I've never heard of such a thing. Or do you just mean a small fish? <laughs> I don't know. Pygmy goat are little tiny goats. Pygmy horses. And a quill is the hollow stem of a feather, the sharp, stiff hair of a porcupine. All right, and then there's a couple books that if you're interested, you could hit pause and you could go look for those books at the library or online. And then I think that's the end. Yep, and then there's an index at the end of the book because it's kind of like a instructional book. Perfect, okay, and that's the end of our story. I hope you liked it. It's kind of fun as a, a camel, a mammal. Do you wanna hear something crazy? This book came out of a, um, like a, storage box that I had in the garage. This book actually came from my classroom when I used to teach science. Mm. Those were the days. So much fun. All right, friends, have a great day. Uh, may the fourth be with you. Always. And I will see you soon. Always. Bye, everyone.